Howdy, me Flowbar here, and welcome another quick request video for a little bit of uh, tutorial assistance. So, what I'm going to do here is, uh, as you can tell by the title of the video, is set up a basic menu and then go into the actual game itself. So, what we already have is this is the tutorial that I did earlier for um, somebody else, and we have a map already for our game, which is the side scroller example map. And this is what we did, uh, was uh, we created this. Um, character being able to run around. Oh no, we hit it, oh no, we hit it, we hit it, and we're dead. It, our death uh, system so far just takes us back a little bit. And I wanna make one change really quickly, and let's go to our um, character blueprints. When it sets our location, let's actually change our Z height to 350 and that's going to put us above the ground and make us fall down so it's more obvious that oh no we just hit it we hit it we hit it and we hit it and died and now we're up in the air and there we can start so we we'd probably want to make a few um, Do the deactivate on our movement. Let's change that around. Let's actually do that here. And let's actually break this link. We'll set our location. We're going to move these guys over a little bit. And we're going to deactivate and then reactivate our movement here. So, this is quite simple. This is just a quick change. So what we're going to do here is just do this, and then we'll get into the meat of the next video. So there, we moved it. We can't move, and then we drop down. We can refine that later. It's not a big deal. But what we want to do is we want to create a, um, a better system for going from a main menu. And I'm just going to create a quick, simple main menu and show you how to actually get it to go into this map. So we know that our map is actually called side scroller example map and I'll show you a quick way of getting into that as well and our build is complete camera today so we can do a quick save all and go into the menu so inside of our UI folder I'm just going to quickly create a main menu so now that everybody's caught up to where we are here so gentlemen you're you're here now so um, we can actually get into creating the actual main menu. Go into our user interface and we're just going to call this our main menu. And I'm going to put underscore W in there just for whatever. And I'm actually not going to do anything with it just yet. We need to create a new map. And I'm going to go to file, new level, empty level. So we have nothing here. And I'm going to go ahead and save current as our main menu map. So this is our main menu. When we first load into the game, this is what happens. We're going to go into this and it'll be our main menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is just for making it do something, we're going to grab an image and we're going to anchor it to full screen. We're going to take our offsets and change them to 0, 0, 0, and 0. So now it's full screen, and that's a little on the bright side, so let's actually change it to black. And I'm going to move that color up to here. And there, we have a, a black main menu. And all I'm going to do is just create a couple things really quickly. And I'm going to go ahead and create a simple panel, and we want a vertical box. We're going to throw this in here, put it in the middle. We're going to anchor it to the middle. It doesn't have to be precise for right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple buttons in. First one. And then I want a space in between there. So I want to go to my primitives, grab a spacer, throw it in here, and there we go. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and assign some text to the button. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click on that button and copy it. And then right click on the vertical box and paste. So now we've got our two buttons here and our spacer. Let's go ahead and make it 50, 50. So our Y is actually going to be our up and down in this case. So we just want a gap in between there. And let's go ahead and make it nice and simple. Play game. And this one we want to exit game. You can make these buttons styled however you want to. Um, I don't need the box to take up everything. So I'm just going to move it so it's right there in the center. Now, quick functionality. All we need to do is we want to compile and save. Button 0. So we know what button 0 is. We're going to give it a name. Play button. So we know that's our play button. And button 1, we're going to change that over to exit button. So now we know what's what. And again, compile and save. I'm going to go to our graph. And we don't need any of this junk all over right now. We're going to start from scratch here. We're going to get our play button. Click it and unclicked. And then our exit button, unclicked. Simple for the exit button we want to quit game nice and simple right so that's all we need to do for that is just we're gonna quit the game as soon as we hit that button but the on clicked play button we want to go ahead and drag off from here and we want to um, excuse me open level okay now we want to make sure that we have our level name exact. And if you're doing any kind of uh, multiplayer, in the options, you want to put in listen. But we're not doing multiplayer, but just in case, compile and save. I'm going to drag my tag or tab over to here. I want to go to my maps folder. I want to get the exact name of that map. So I can click on it, click on it again so that it's like that. Control C, so I copy it come back in here and where it says level name control V and now that's it side scroller example map so if I hit compile and save and now we're looking at our blank screen here let's hit play and nothing's there so what we need to do here is we need to set up a um, way to make sure that it shows that so with this map right here we go into our world outline and game mode override is none selected game mode but well, we don't have a game mode for this so how are we going to tell it to do anything here so if we want to we could actually just tell it to go into game side scroller mode but default pawn class is none so we don't have a character because we had a character he'd fall through the world we don't want that to happen our HUD class well we don't really have a HUD. So we could do it a couple different ways here. Our player HUD or our main menu widget. Hmm. If we were to come in here and right click and add a new uh, blueprint class, select it here and here, type in HUD. You can see right there HUD. Select it and select main menu HUD if you go into it there and go into your event graph on event begin play you can then tell it to create a widget and tell it to use your player HUD no we want to use our main menu widget in here Owning player is get player character or controller. And we want to make sure that we have a mouse cursor. So let's go ahead and set input to UI only. Connect that there. The widget to focus is going to come off of right here. And we want to drag off from here and set show mouse cursor and that's why in the other map the first thing that I put down 
was to do basically the same thing but go into game mode only and turn off the mouse cursor. So this way we're going to create their widget and everything is going to be good that way. So hit compile and save. And now on our HUD we can go to our main menu HUD and let's save all. So I hit play and I still don't have anything. That's our player HUD. Let's stop. Um, main menu HUD is what we want it to show. Our widget. Look at our designer. We have that. So hitting play doesn't show the, the widget at all because we have no pawn whatsoever. Um, we've got our main menu HUD and our player controller. Everything else is there. So I just want to quickly go over how we can actually set this up. And our UI, let's go ahead and um, create a blueprint class. And character, let's call this our main menu underscore um, player controller. And inside here, we don't have anything. Um, this is really not going to matter all that much. So our default pawn is our main menu player controller. I'm not, actually, let's not even worry about this right here. Let's delete that. Not even that important. We just wanted to show this right here. And we can actually come in here in our blueprints and our open level blueprint. And on our event begin play, that's where we can actually put in our information for where we just put it in the main menu HUD. So I'm just going to grab this, control C and control V, drop it in there. So when we go to the menu, we want to actually do it that way. And it's not showing up. I've done this a thousand times, and it's going to be one of those times where it's just everything is going to defy what I'm trying to do. Main menu map. Let's go with no HUD. Main menu widget. Everything is good. Alright, so basically all we're doing is we're just telling it to open the level whenever we hit that button. So if you look at our graph, whenever your your button for your your menu is displayed, all you're telling it to do for play is to and this is the basic way to do it, is to insert the map name into an open level node and there you go, and that's gonna do it. And I'm just wanting to make sure that I've, I've got everything set up here for the main menu HUD. Because in theory, it should then open up this on e Event Begin Play. It shouldn't need this in the map itself if you're using the main menu HUD. So when we create it on event begin play, oh, yeah, there, there's one thing I forgot to put in here. Because I'm being a dumb dumb and trying to rush through this, what is the one thing you need to do? You need to, why can't you see it? Because you need to add it to viewport. Dumb dumb. Ah, <sighs> yeah, this has been one of those days target is this. So we're wanting to add the um, it's not an error. We want to add the widget to the viewport. And it's kind of hard to see with all these blue traces in here. You can clean that up the best way you can and, and do that but now if we go into it we have our main menu and if I hit exit game it exits the game. If I hit play game it now loads and goes into our game. All right, other than my couple little mistakes here, um, any questions so far? It's just that easy to get it to load that. Just the same, you know, you could refine this on your player. If you decide you want to do an escape menu, and like, if I hit escape right now, I'm in standalone viewer. But if I want to have an escape menu, then...
how can you go about setting up an escape menu? It's just as simple. We come in here, make a user interface, widget blueprint, escape, underscore menu. It's just that easy, same thing. Um, you grab your vertical box. And we don't want to have a, a full black background. We're just going to be ugly. We're going to anchor it to the center of the screen. And we're going to add a button in with text. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to put in a spacer. I'm just going to drop it right there. It's fine. And then button one, we're going to copy and paste. And our spacer, let's go ahead and put 50, so we have our gap there. I like to leave it a little high, that way it's not blocking directly in front of the, the player's view. So the first one, we're going to have main menu button. And we want to do for button one, resume button. So if we don't want that menu, we can just tell it to resume the game and it'll get rid of our menu. So our text here, we want to go to main menu. And this could be the same basic principle as a regular um, menu. Our text for our resume button is resume game. Now, that's the basic simple functionality there. So compile and save and inside of our graph same thing. We want to go ahead and delete everything inside here. We want to click on our main menu button, unclicked, resume button, unclicked. And with this, all we're going to do on resume is remove from parent, and that should delete it. But let's go ahead and add in one more thing here, and let's. Um, get reference to our player controller and we want to set input to game mode only and we want to set show mouse cursor and leave it unchecked so that when we do this we're going to actually turn off our, our our input to go back into the game mode and get rid of our cursor and get rid of our menu and the same thing for our, um, our thing right here we need to go ahead and tell it to open level and we need to go to our main menu map so again if you don't remember how you spelled it before you can double click on it or you can click on it and hit F2 to rename it and then control C and then in your escape menu or wherever you want to make that reference to you know, open level click in here paste in the name of the level you want to go to again if this is a multiplayer then you would type in listen right there but it's not so that's it on this one now quick functionality of how we get that main menu compile and save this should work just fine um, main menu HUD we can actually close that we don't need that we're gonna go into our character blueprint and we just need to set up an input and type in escape and that's going to be our escape key so when we press the escape key we want to create a widget okay and we're going to get our get player controller And from there, the widget we're using is our escape menu. We want to add a viewport, naturally, because I forgot that on the last step. And then from there as well, we want to set input to UI only. We want to stop our character cold when we're in this menu. And then we want to connect our widget here and then we want to do set show mouse cursor and we want that to be true so this should let us go directly in 
We're going to compile and save. And now, to test it out correctly, I'm going to go in here and play in standalone game. Save selected, and now it's going to open it up in a new window and allow me to play it as if I'm actually playing the game. Because any other way that I play it, hitting the escape key is going to close the game down. I prefer an escape key. You can set it up whatever key you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit play game. Now it loads into the map, and I can actually come in here and play the game. Everything's good. I can, oh no, I keep hitting my, my barricade. It kills me, and it's an obvious thing that, okay, now I've reset. And now if I hit the escape key, I have my resume. I can go back in and play. Hit escape key, go back to the main menu, and there it is. All right, any questions? It's nice and simple. We hit escape to bring up the menu. And play game is an open level feature. So as I'm playing the game and decide, you know, I don't want to play anymore, I hit escape and go back to the main menu and I can exit the game. Just that easy. Now in my escape menu, if I want to add other functionality, like if I want to just go ahead and exit the game, then I can go ahead and I'm going to right click on resume button. I'm going to copy that, go back up to my vertical box, and I'm going to paste it in there. And I'm going to do the same thing with my spacer. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And I put it in the wrong order. Oh no. So I left click on it and drag it up. And there we go. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to rename the text to exit game. And change the name of the button to exit button. Go back to my graph and compile, save. Unclicked. Quit game. Super simple. Everything is good. Everything is good. We hit play one more time, show the basic functionality of what we have. When we first start the game, we want to start the game in our main menu map because this is going to give us our main menu. Now the menu is up. I can choose to exit the game or play the game. You can add as many functions right here and buttons you want to do and so much more functionality. So let's hit play game. Okay, now I can come in here and play. I can run around. Everything's awesome. Uh, okay, yeah, I oh don't know. I'm getting killed. And then I have my, my death animation system set up right there. Um, Erica, we're playing. Now I don't want to play anymore. Hit escape. Now I have the option of going to the main menu, resuming the game to get rid of this, or I can hit exit game and it kills the game. Super simple. If you guys got any questions, and if you guys want to see this quick little project, it was just slapped together, you know, like 20, 30 minutes worth of work here and there. Um, if you want to see this start turning into a game, or you want to see a side-scroller game based off of this template, then let me know. Um, it shouldn't be blurry. Uh, well, no, the FPS did drop a little bit. Um... Been having some issues with the internet around here lately, and unfortunately, I don't have much choice. The neighborhood that I live in has no fiber optic, so you know you got to. I got to deal with what I what I got. So normally I'm at 30 FPS. It's dropped down to 20 FPS. Um, yeah, it's pushing the limits of my my upstream. So I'm not sure. Yep. Oh, sorry about that. So, are there any questions on what we've got so far? And hit play. It should be okay while I'm playing as well. FPS drop down in play mode. Yeah, it dropped down to 15 FPS for some reason on that. Um, let's see here. Let's hit play game. See what happens. And staying at 20 FPS. But if you want to see, like, maybe a character change, you know, I've got, um, if you guys have seen them, the, um, 
The Cinti Studios asset packs. Yeah, I actually love them. Um, may actually look into the idea of if you guys want to see it, a side scroller with some asset changes and things like that. Let's actually exit the game and um, let's look at the animations. It's empty. Look at the mannequin animations folder. Alright, so it's using the same basic animation system and animations from the regular third person animation blueprint. It's kind of cool actually. Um, you look at the animation blueprint um, default, yeah, this looks like a standard third-person animation blueprint. So it's interesting that it's using third-person animation blueprint, which will make it a lot easier for me to import my characters in from these different asset packs. But if you guys want to see uh, an asset swap and bring in, um, like, Cinti Studios um, Western or City or Heist or something like that or um, whatever, and actually throwing a theme to this by adding the asset packs in, in creating a side scroller game based off of that, what I can do is I can reset the stream, give it a fresh title, and get set up and create a whole new project. And I'll start with a um, a side scroller and make. But what is what what theme am I going to work with here? Um, I've got quite a few actually. Guys, got any suggestions on themes? pretty much any of the Cinti Studios asset packs, like um, City, Heist, um, World War II, Western, what's it's called, the, the War Pack, it's not called World War II, but it is World War II stuff. Um, the Adventure Pack, Dungeons, uh, um, Samurai, or it's like the, the Ninja Style, or God, um, Pirates, um, I, I think what I'll do is I'll put one together, I, and I think World War II seems like a kind of a fun theme, but I don't know. There's a sci-fi pack also. Um, I don't know. I, I'll give it a think while I'm resetting the um the stream, and I will actually go from start to finish with a blank project with the side scroller blueprint um template modify the characters to work with the Cinti Studios asset pack for the I don't know, the Western pack seems pretty good. I don't know, I'll figure out which asset pack I want to use and then um, I'll modify the characters to work, we'll pick a character maybe make a main menu, maybe a character selection screen uh, things like that. And just go from start to finish of creating a, a simple side-scroller game from start to finish doing one map at a time and just kind of evolve from there where when you complete a map you have the the option of going to the next map or whatever um, but I'll do that and thank you guys for watching again this was a free tutorial to help somebody from the Virtus discord channel now Virtus um, uh, has some really good videos and some really good tutorials I'm showing you how to make side scrollers and third person shooters and that kind of stuff. Great stuff. Great guy. He's smart. Smarter than me. Um, and I really recommend checking out his channel as well. Um, he should be in one of the featured channels listed on mine. But I think that's, that's where I'm going to go. He's got his series and, and videos and stuff. And I think I'll start working on the side scroller on another video. And I will actually do everything on a live stream so you can see mistakes and all how I'm creating everything. Alright, if you guys have any questions, please make sure you check out my Discord channel. Um, I'm also a moderator on the Virtus Discord channel. So, either or, but preferably if you check in on mine, that's where I'll, I'll respond a lot faster there. Um, but thanks for watching, and I'm going to go ahead and get set up, and I'll start another stream here shortly, and I will start building a side-scroller game since people are starting to show more interest in them. Um, but we'll create a, a side-scroller game from start to finish, all on live streams, and I'm going to use my basic menu system. I'm not going to do multiplayer, because there's just no point with a side-scroller. Um, so I'll create a new menu system. I'll do a character selection screen. I'll use the Cinti Studios asset pack um, for the characters, 
and for the scenery and the map and we'll just go ahead and create as we go all right guys we'll see you soon give me about 20 minutes to get set up and i'll go from there all right see you soon